I had a full like mission to help other people from day one. Um, never realizing how much I would help myself in the process. Um, so I'm I think so that's probably glad. Easy. Like that, that, that is powerful. That's a powerful statement. That's a, I think that's a very humble, like people don't think that's, that, that takes humility. That takes a lot of sure. humility to be able to, uh, use that response because it really embodies what this show is about. I really believe that we are called. And I said this on my last show is that we are created to create. You saw the daily bread, here's the new recipe. You can expect to see more transparency. 5,006 figure earners, this success to me. Giving the best of me, my living legacy. What's up guys, welcome to My Living Legacy. In this episode, we're gonna be showing you some behind the scenes footage from a podcast that I did with Thomas Duran, uh, the Just Create podcast. Some of the questions that he asked allowed me to go into uh, a lot further detail uh, on the intent behind starting uh, all this stuff that we've been doing on social media as we've been leveling up the quality of the content and then a little bit of advice for those that are thinking about starting to build a personal brand and, and put themselves out there on social media. I think it's uh, important content for you to see and I can't wait for you to check out this conversation with Thomas Duran. I, and not to make this literally like a church sermon, but <laughs> but like, I mean, you know, the, the second time that I that I've ever felt like I've heard directly from God. And this one was way more stronger than the first. I was driving up. Um, it was a Friday afternoon. Uh, my wife's from Asheville, North Carolina. She had gone up there to visit her family and I was going to go after, after work. So we had some webinars that day and, and I was heading up there and, uh, you go through the mountains to get to Asheville, North Carolina from, from South Carolina. And, uh, there's always this little area that I lose service on my cell phone. And, and so, um, I had, I had been through a particular, like just kind of, a. Difficult few weeks, uh, just struggling with you know my purpose and kind of what I was supposed to be doing in regards to you know the insurance industry and the, the different uh, daily and weekly tasks that I was really responsible with. You know, was I born to do this? Was is this what I'm supposed to be doing for the rest of my life? Kind of kind of questions that a lot of people go through. And and uh, so I started praying, and, and you know it wasn't the the pretty like you know hands crossed, like on your knees, pray. It was like the, like I was crying the, and the like, ugly, the ugly cry. like the <laughs> ugly, ugly cry, ugly praying. And, uh, and literally I just, I, I said, I t so what happened is I got to that area where I lost service and I texted my wife, um, asking her, uh, we were going to be grilling out and I had asked her, I was like, Hey, do you need me to stop and grab some beer? And, um, and she was like, yeah, she's like, uh, and she said something I said or tequila and she said both it's been a or she said or I said or both uh, it's been a you know crazy day and so I kind of got to that area where I'd lost service on my phone and and I was praying and I, and I was like it's very direct and and saying God like I need you to I need you to show me like I need I need to know what I'm supposed to be doing because you know, I was in the process of helping start a church at the time I'm documenting all this stuff on social media I'm working 16 18 hours a week you know with, or a week <laughs> that'd be great um, working 16 to 18 hours uh, a day of the insurance business there's so much going on but like I got I need you to show me like right now like I'm so confused like I just need to know exactly what I'm supposed to be doing like show me right now now and like as i said right now i had just come up on the other end of the mountain and my service came back on my phone oh, and i'm like i need you to show me right now and then my phone goes off i looked down at it and it was my wife texting me back and the context of her of of her text message was you know i said like or should i get beer and tequila uh it's been a long day and she was basically saying like tell me about it it had been a long day for her too but she said the word preach and so I'm sitting there, I'm like, God, I need you to show me exactly, like, tell me right now exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. Phone goes off and I look down and says, preach. Wow. And I'm like, um, come again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, the, and the interesting thing was it wasn't that far fetched in the, in the fact that we were, we were building a church, not building a church. We were helping start a church, like yeah. an extension campus of uh, elevation church out of Charlotte. Um, we were starting a Greenville, um, campus and, and at some point there was going to have to be a pastor of that church, like. So it wasn't like a crazy, crazy far-fetched thing. 
what I learned over the course of the next really six months is that it didn't say be a preacher. It said preach. And that you can preach from any platform. It doesn't have to be up on stage at church. You can preach from, I don't know, Facebook Live. Yep. You can preach from Instagram. You can preach from a podcast. And it's just putting out a message with the intent to impact others. And and so like I think about that every single day that this is what I was born to do and this is what I'm supposed to do. And that creates this like deeper, deeper responsibility that I feel like I have uh, just to put this message out there. And, uh, and we're trying to do that, you know, in, in greater and greater and greater ways every day. You are. And this is the other level that, I mean, that really kind of, um, I just have mad respect for, uh, and appreciate the, the commitment because you don't, and you do this because you just want to help people. You literally, this is, this is <laughs> to put that much time, that much commitment, that much investment for, what in return there you know what i'm saying like like as in monetary as in you know like there's there, there's there's a lot of great benefits when we help out people we kind of discussed that about already but just the the sheer amount of commitment it's just absolutely money basically doing so much and not asking for anything is is uh what the most it, it's, it's just a tremendous so like that i but the 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 quality of work that you're putting into um is what really um is what really kind of uh, uh, re I relate to, and 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 I just want to commend you on it because every single piece of content that you put out there, even if it's just your Instagram stories, um, it it looks and has the feel of like I took my time to put this together. There was very very specific. There was a it's very very creative and it's completely different and 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 this is where i'm kind of sore my message is is for people is that no matter where you're at be purposeful on what you create and do the best that you can to be not necessarily be somewhat different really so be somewhat mm -hmm. different in your creative style you don't have to be the same guy that's walking down a hallway and holding a phone and talking and saying that you have six different ways to become a billionaire and you're shooting from an iPhone. I don't get that. Yeah. Like, like yeah. the quality needs to match your level of what you're pitching. Right. And so sure. the, the amount of investment and the amount of um, time that you put into making your work that your, your guys' content highly, just extremely quality is, 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 is commendable and is pretty amazing. And so like, do you, what do you tell people with that? I mean, because there is a process. And so don't, don't compare yourself to where you're at and where they're starting. But yeah. like, you know, when you made that commitment, like why was it important for you to make that commitment for that quality? It was, we, I love this term scaling impact. Ooh. And so like, there was only so much I could do on my own. Um, and I knew to reach more people and to reach people in a more impactful way, the quality had to get better. I had the quantity down. <laughs> like you couldn't, we couldn't do more quantity. Like people were telling me like you're posting too much, which that's a whole nother story because I just don't agree that exists. Um, the, I really don't, I truly don't believe you can post too much. Uh, just because the percentage of people that are actually seeing it. Right. Exactly. Um, that, that, that's a, that's a whole nother conversation. But yeah. I, I, I agree with you on that. Yeah. But, um, and the people that are talking about posting too much, just don't post enough typically. <laughs> but, um, but the quality, like it, it had to, it had to, uh, it had to level up just as I felt like I was leveling up and this idea of scaling impact. Like we, we, my team and I would talk about it all the time. Like, like our ROI are those messages. Like anytime I get a message, I send it to the team. Anytime there's like significant comment about, you know, you know, I did a post last night that's gotten like 130 comments that are like just really deep comments. A lot of them. Um, anytime that happens, I'll screenshot and, and send it to the team because that's what we're, that, that's our return. Like again, we don't monetize any of this stuff. Uh, we're not selling anything. There's never been anything that anyone's been able to purchase uh, from me, and, and and I take a lot of pride in that because it's very different, and unique. Um, but you know, for the person that's getting started, um, leaders follow. And so I tried to find other people that were putting out incredible content and tried to emulate some of that. Like in the very beginning, a lot of people like kind of got on me for, you know, this guy's trying to be Gary V, you know, this guy's trying to be just like Gary V. And, you know, it, it wasn't a, a 
specific, like he did this post, I'm going to copy that post, but it's impossible for you to consume someone's content for two, three years and not start to sound like him, you know? And and like, you know, that's just is what it is. And quite frankly, his, his content was extremely uh, impactful. And, and obviously, uh, I mean, he always says like, don't, don't listen to what I say, watch what I do. And so I felt like that was a good business move to, to kind of uh, emulate some of the the content that he was putting out. Um, but then I knew I started to kind of, I needed to have my own kind of flavor to it, uh, or my own right. spin to it. And so, you know, a lot of the things that we're doing now are just trying to find things that we're not seeing other places. Um, so looking at, you know, what all the other big name influencers are, are doing and saying like, well, how can we do something different? Like right now, these road to legacy videos that we're doing, um, the format every day is so different and we're always constantly trying to push the boundaries of what's possible, create, uh, creatively while meeting deadlines, you know, in such a quick turnaround and while meeting, you know, quantity yeah. specifications and the number of posts that we're doing. And, and that's a hard, you know, balance there. Um, I think once people get to that level, they'll, they'll certainly, um, you know, understand that there has to be a balance between, you know, um, perfection and quality. Like we're never shooting for perfection, but I'm never going to post something that I don't think was of high quality, um, uh, just for the sake of, saying that I post three times today. Yeah. Um, yeah. so I think that's an important, uh, distinction, but, but yeah, man, it's, uh, this social media world, like it's, it's always changing, always evolving, but we're trying to find the people that are doing the best and see how we can, you know, challenge that, how we can, uh, see if we can create something. We have meetings that are literally just like brainstorming meetings. Like, you know, one we had last week where I sat down and I was just like, Hey, I want to do something like this. We need to do a post that has, you know, something in the content that people will share to their stories. Like how can we get people to share my posts and their stories? Because I personally believe that no one's scrolling up and down on Instagram. They're only scrolling, scrolling. you know, right to left in, in the stories. So I focus, like I love Instagram stories. It's one of my, my focuses. It's just where I like to consume content and where I like to create it to me. Everyone's Instagram story is their vlog. And if you treat it as such, it's pretty powerful. Um, but how can That's we get people to share the story? post to stories and so looking at like doing things where and then tagging people in it so like looking at doing posts where there's like blanks like the most confident person i know is and then blank um the person i've seen grow the most in 2018 is and then blank to where they can share that post to their stories and then tag people in the blanks to shout them out so it just gets so many more people to your content um you know little things like that or like you know little call um Right now, my main focus is call to actions. Like I just, it's, you know, not every post, but the majority of posts, if there's not a call to action on it, it's like worth, it's not even worth posting. Uh, So trying to figure out little calls to action, like put a hashtag in the comments to describe your day, you know, or like, you know, little things like that, other than just like saying like, you know, comment yes, if you agree, you know, trying to like have higher level calls to action, because the reality is like, I understand that when someone's scrolling through content that it's asking a lot to get them to just look at it, no less like it really no less comment and then potentially share it. Like that's a lot to ask somebody. And so you got to give them a reason why they're going to comment. Like to think someone's going to see something and it's just going to spark this creativity inside them to have to comment with some like, you know, how it affected them versus like asking them a legit question and having them respond to it. Um, you know, more like, you know, organic conversations happening within, within the post. Like that's where my head's at right now is trying to get more of that, uh, to happen. Dude, that was some amazing knowledge <laughs> that you just dropped there. And, uh, I, I thank you for that. That was, yeah. that was, that was amazing. So as we wrap things up here and I, I, I do want to just, uh, I'll t- take some time to say thank you, but, uh, um, what would your, what would be some last words that you would like to give out to people that are no, three different people that, that are starting, that are using video in their businesses and want to grow. I mean, like basically what would be your message about doing this content creation? What would you encourage them if they feel depressed, if they feel like they're not where they want to be? What would, what would your message be to them too? So the, the biggest thing is for the person that's thinking about starting or just got started. Um, the main thing that I think people struggle with is this, who am I? Uh, complex. This idea of like, who who am I to be sitting on this, 
you know, podcast right now talking about content creation when I have zero background in graphics, zero really creative background whatsoever, um, and only a two year track record of doing anything on social media and, and, and putting out creative content, you know, who am I to jump on a Facebook live when we get off of this and talk about entrepreneurship, you know, who am I to post, you know, three times today and clog up my friends' news feeds and, you know, who am I to think, who am I to think that I have anything to say worth listening to? Like that's legitimately someone is listening to this right now and they're saying, who am I to think that someone is going to listen to what I have to say and that they're actually going to get something out of it. And I just, it's just gotten to this almost, almost weird sense of deep, deep responsibility that I literally believe someone is out there waiting for you to put your story out there, waiting to put a, put your message out there because your message is the only message that can, that can reach them. And, and that sounds weird. And the first time I ever heard anybody uh, reference this was Ryan Mickler. Same here. Uh, I was about and to it was, say that. Yeah. It was at Meltdown in the Desert the year prior to to this past year. So it was 2000, uh, uh, 2017. Yeah, I was there, yeah. Yeah, like that message um, resonated with me, so, with me so much. And I talk about it all the time, like that there's someone out there that's literally sitting there waiting to hear the message that only you can deliver. And that, you know, Gary Vee could say it, Tony Robbins could say it, E.T. could get up and yell it, like <laughs> that they could do all of that. But it wouldn't really resonate with them because it wouldn't, for whatever reason, it wouldn't hit them. But the way you could deliver it, maybe in a not so eloquent way, maybe in a fumbling over your words way, but for whatever reason, it just caught them at just the right moment and just the right way. Uh, and it affected them in, in a way that, you know, possibly put them on a path towards, you know, a life changing decision that they have to make or, or maybe just, it just caught them at a right time where they didn't go down a, a, a further downward spiral, uh, that they were potentially headed towards, uh, in their life. And when you start looking at it that way, um, it becomes very much of a responsibility to start putting, uh, the content out there. And so like the, who am I is very much a, who am I not to like, you know, who am I, you know, not to try to put out as much content as I possibly can. If I've seen the evidence that it can help people, um, why would I not put out more and more and more and more? Uh, and a lot of that just has to do with, with ego, um, and, and finally letting that ego aside and, and just doing this, you know, maybe for other people and not yourself and not caring if, you know, you do a Facebook live and, you know, you, you know, misused a word and you felt stupid and, you know, no one, like no one cares. Like yeah. no one, no one remembers a bad post. Uh, it's a super important thing to remember. Like no one remembers a bad Instagram live. Like no one, like there's so much content out there. Like no one remembers this stuff. So, you know, who are you? You're someone that has a story to tell. And there's someone out there that needs to hear it. Uh, and that should be all, all the reason that you need uh, to put it out there. But um, to commit to doing it for at least six months as well. Um, you're not going to know in a month. You're not going to know even in three months whether or not this is something that is going to serve you. But within six months, you'll have some feedback that'll that'll fire you up and that'll keep you going beyond that. So if you can just commit to doing it um, at scale, like posting three times per day for six months, then I promise you'll never stop. Uh, and it'll only get more and more and more impactful. Uh, but you need to give it at least six months because um, you need time uh, just for these things to work, uh, work themselves out and for people to be able to even find you to have these type of impactful conversations. Uh, but you'll be surprised. You'll be surprised how quickly – um, how quickly it'll happen, especially through video. And I think that's obviously the importance on this, on this podcast is there's something special about video. I'm a very, very visual person. And so I understood this very quickly because it's the, it's really the only way that I, um, um, what's the word, um, uh, to absorb, absorb to absorb to information and, yeah. yeah uh it starts with a re re something information Relate, retain retain retain, retain. Yeah. yeah it's like the only way i retain information like i've i've often even gone as far as saying like you know you've got that the the app uh, audible i wish they'd make yeah. one called visible <laughs> that literally was just like an author reading his book Bro, like i, think I don't even need it I think you just came yeah, up with yeah. a new business plan. <laughs> I don't think there's many people like me, <laughs> as I think. Maybe but so. uh, but like not even acting it out, just literally the the just by engaging my eyes to it and and my ears, 
it helps me retain it. And it's like, that's why daily V was so huge for me. Um, it's because I'm watching and I'm learning and I'm not just listening. I'm not just reading something. And so there's something very, very powerful about video and there's something extremely powerful about putting yourself out in video. It's, it's the most uncomfortable. It's the most uncomfortable you could possibly be, especially if it's live, um, is to put your, put, put yourself out, uh, on video. Uh, but man, it's, um, it's really, really, really powerful to see looking back. And Gary V says this uh, often that he does the daily V for the recall. I never understood what that meant until like maybe six months ago when I realized that with the daily vlog that I did, the daily bread, that it 100% like the views that it got, the comments that it got made were of no importance to the recall that I now have to be able to pull up that content today and create a video around that content. And what's going to be crazy is 10 years from now when I'm able to pull up that content. Like when you talk about legacy, you talk about this stuff being documented forever. Like, like this video, like this podcast that we're recording is also being recorded on video and this will live on forever. Like, I'll be able to show my grandkids one day about this conversation and they'll be able to see it. They'll be able to hear it. They'll be able to experience it. And there's something to be said for that. Like there's something to be said for the fact that like if my grandfather, if I was able to right now pull up a video from him when he was my age, you know, when he was in the army, you know, and what he was going through at that time, like to think that, 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 that video would not be important to me is ridiculous. Like that, that would cherish that video content. My dad, if I had video of my dad as he was building businesses, you know, going in and out of meetings and what he was going through in his life and his personal life and, you know, growing up with me as a kid. And like, if I was able to watch that content, that's probably all I would watch. (laughs) Like I would watch it every, I would watch it every day. And so to think that this type of content is going to be readily available for our future generations to see, um, you know, it, even to a scary degree. I mean, they're probably going to be able to put a contact lens and and sit next to me and experience this conversation in real time. Like it's it's crazy. Um, but that to me is what we have the ability to go do. And so if if the technology exists and the technology exists in such a way now where you can do it pretty economically getting started. Right. Then who would you, then who am I not to document it? Like, who am I not to create all of this content for my future family generations from now? If I knew I could. And like, that's the way, like, you know, when I look at friends and, 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 and other people that, that just don't do any of it, like, I don't judge, but man, I just feel like, I, I feel bad. Like, I'm like, man, they're missing. I'm like, I'm like, this dude is such a good guy and has such incredible, like, like, uh, character and, and so much like skill and skills and talents. Like, man, like his family is going to be really, 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 um, it's going to be really unfortunate for his family that they're not going to be able to have the type of stuff that I'm putting together one day, you know, like it's weird to look at it that way. But like, when you start thinking about it from a, a, the viewpoint of legacy, man, it's, um, it is very deep, very deep. Hi guys, hope you enjoyed this episode of My Living Legacy. Just as we did last time, I really want to give a shout out to three people that have been following and engaging in the content uh, for a period of time. And, And again, it means the absolute world to me. As you've seen in this episode, my intent from day one was to see how I could help others uh, and put out this content uh, in the hopes that it would find someone that needed to see it uh, and hopes that it would find someone that would engage with it and create conversations uh, within the content. And it means the world uh, to me for those people that are actually doing that. And these are three of those people I wanted to call them out, especially on this episode. Tiffany Strunk, Justin James and Mark Reese. I appreciate the three of you uh, more than you know. Some of the comments that you guys uh, have put uh, out, some of the messages that you've sent me directly uh, have meant the world to me uh, in times where I really needed to hear it. uh, And that means so much. So appreciate you three and appreciate all of you for watching My Living Legacy. We'll see you next time.